Acts 1 8. Acts 1 8. He said, You shall receive power. How many like the sound of that? You'll receive power after that the Holy Ghost, ghost is an old English word for spirit, Holy Spirit is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And what's the result of that? You'll be what? Witnesses to me. Uh, the Living Bible says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you'll receive power to testify. Power to testify about me with great effect. So you can see that this is, there's something more than just you witnessing and testifying. Somebody else is involved in this. Amen. And it's causing great effect. It's having great impact on the person or persons that's hearing it, which is beyond what you're doing. You're giving your testimony, but somebody else got involved with it. Amen. The greater one in you and on you. You'll receive power to testify about me with great effect. The Weiss translation says, you'll receive power of the kind which God has and exerts after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be those who testify of what they have seen and experienced. My witnesses both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria to the end of the earth. Now, we went into some detail in the beginning of this uh, series distinguishing between preaching and testifying. Distinguishing between preaching a message or preaching an evangelistic message or trying to teach a Bible truth or doctrine versus giving your testimony Witnessing. They're not the same thing. And uh, we looked at scripture in James that said, you know, that we're not, not many of us are called to be teachers. And yet we see all of us are anointed to be witnesses. Yes. And uh, witnessing does not mean going and preaching an evangelistic message to a stranger. That's trying to, to be an evangelist. That's trying to be a preacher. And you may not be called or anointed to do that. And that's why many have attempted it and, and with not, without good results and become discouraged and didn't want to do it again. And yet, everybody who knows God has a testimony. And it's not trying to teach or preach a Bible doctrine or tell somebody else's story. What is a witness? What is a witness? A witness is one who testifies, one who affirms what they have seen and heard and know. So you can't testify about what somebody else experienced or what they know. That's hearsay, right? Not admissible as evidence in court. But you can testify about what God did for you because you were there. That's right. I said you were there when it happened. Yeah. You experienced it. You know, and nobody can tell you that you don't know that the Lord saved you. That's right. Nobody can tell you you weren't born again because you were there when it happened. Yeah. You know it. Yes. Nobody can tell you that the Lord didn't heal you, that he didn't help you pay your bill, that he didn't set you free from this or that. That you are a living witness of that, and that is much more powerful than we've realized. Much more important and much more powerful. Uh, I, I mentioned Timothy, but for time's sake, just go to Revelation. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. And 10, I'm reading the Amplified. 12 and 10 said, I, uh, I heard a strong, loud voice in heaven saying, Now has come the salvation, the power, and the kingdom, 
the dominion, the reign of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren, he who keeps bringing before our God charges against them day and night has been cast out. Thank God. Verse 11, and they have overcome him. Who? The accuser of the brethren. The devil. They overcome him by means of the blood of the lamb and by the utterance of their testimony. Amen. Is our testimony important? Oh, yes. It's linked here together with the blood of the lamb. Yeah. How important is that? Amen. He could have just said we overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Yeah. Right? Not said anything else. But no, he said this was a key too. The utterance of our testimony. And it goes on to say, for they did not love and cling to life, even when faced with death, holding their lives cheap till they had to die for their witnessing. Now, we studied earlier about Stephen, the, the martyr, and about many of those. If you look in the book of Revelation, uh, you see John saw a great group of those who had died for their witness. And many have, and some are today, and, and, and many will before all of this is over. Should you be willing to die for your witness? Yeah. And a lot of people may not have thought about this this much, but you should be. Yeah. Well, if you should, it's got to be really important. Amen. I mean, you don't die for something that's not important. You don't die for something that's no big deal. If you should be willing to die before you'd say your testimony is not true, Amen. Come on. Hmm? you'd be willing to go to that links for it, then it's got to be something of great importance. It's got to be something powerful in the earth. And think about this. Why, who's behind uh, people becoming murderous and wanting to kill people over their witness. Who's behind that? It doesn't even make sense in the natural that a lot of people would get so upset about us saying that God is real to us and has done things in our life. They ought to just, if, if, if they don't believe he's real, why would they care? Amen. Just drive on. Amen. Right? <laughs> and leave us alone. But people become murderous. <laughs> Over this, we, we read in the book of Acts where they got so mad while Stephen was testifying that they, they gnashed on him with their teeth. They ripped their clothes. And there were times when Paul was testifying, they ripped their clothes and threw dirt in the air and, and yelled to kill him, kill him, kill him. Why? What's going on? That doesn't, that's not even reasonable Amen. from a natural standpoint. What's going on? You're getting a glimpse into how this vexes the evil one. Amen. Amen. Why would it vex him so? The reason the people are acting like that is because they're yielding to his influence. Well, why would he care? Why is it such a big deal to him? Why would he care? <laughs> Do you want to know some more about this? Uh, go to Matthew 5. Man, when you get this, it's going to do something for you. It's going to go off in you. And you're going to go look for somewhere to give you testimony. <laughs> and let them rip their clothes and throw dirt in the air all they want to. <laughs> you, you will just go ahead and tell it. Tell what? What is your witness? Come on, help me out. What you have personally seen Heard, know what you've experienced that the Lord has done for you. Yes. Can you tell that? Yes. Sure you can. You don't even need any notes. <laughs> Do you? No. You were there. Right? This brother testifying about how God spared him in that car wreck. He don't need any notes to tell that. Right? He was there. Boom, boom. He gets out. No scratch. He was there. Right? He was there. I got no scratches. I got no problems. I was there when God kept me from being killed in a car wreck. 
or maimed or whatever. I was there. I was there. This lady said, I was there when God got me a job. I was right there when it happened. When it came together, like no man could put it together. I was there. I was there. Can you tell that? Sure you can. And when you're prompted of the Lord to tell it, somebody else gets involved. The Holy Spirit helps you and comes on the hearer. And you testify with great effect. That's what the devil is concerned about. The power. The great effect. That's what has him shaken. And that's why he, 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 he goes to such bizarre links to shut that witness up. Why do they need to be shut up? Why? Why is it such a deal? <laughs> In Matthew 5 and 14, Jesus said this. Matthew 5, 14, he said, Jesus said what? You are the light of the world. Hallelujah. You are the light of the world. We'll see other scriptures that reveal the world is lying in darkness. I know the sun is shining bright out here today. But spiritually, darkness is all over the planet. It's dark. But God has not left himself without witness in the earth. And Jesus is the light of the world. And he has been sent and he, the word has become flesh. And he, the light, has been manifested in the darkness. That's why you and I wouldn't be in here today. Right? And the good news about him and what he has done is the truth, is the light, is life. And now you and I have been born again and we are children of the light. And we are the light in this dark place. Thank you, Lord. Say it out loud. We are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Say it again. We are. We are. I am. We are, we are the, light of the, world. the light of the world. You say, well, I thought Jesus was the light of the world. He is, but he's not here in person. He's at the right hand of the Father. But his spirit is in us. Is that right? He is in us, and we're in him. And so he is the light of the world in us. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Now, you've got to understand, they did not have light bulbs in these days, nor electricity in the house, nor a switch that you could flip on. If you want it to not be dark in the house at night, you've got to go get the candle, Right? And if you want the candle to give the most light, you don't need it on the floor. Right? You got to get it up. Get it up where it can radiate out. And, and you don't hide it. You don't put it under a cover. That'd do you no good to light the candle and then cover it up. But you, you put it up on a stand where it can be seen all over the house. Where nothing is blocking the light. Why are we talking about candles and baskets? Because you are the light of the world. Are you to be hid in your little cubby hole at your house or apartment? Huh? You're the light of the world. Or are you to hold close to the chest your experience with the Lord? Huh? That's just between me and him. It's not for public consumption. Is that not covering up the light? Yes. We are the light of the world. Come on, say it again. We are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Verse 16. Do what? Let your light, Let your light so shine. Yeah. Where? 
before men. How are you going to let your light shine? How are you going to let your light? People are just going to look at you. Huh? How are we going to let the light shine? How's the light going to get out? Well, you don't cover it. Don't hide it under the bed. Don't just shut it up in the apartment. Don't just hide in the corner. Huh? Don't just keep it to yourself. We got to let this light shine before men. Philippians 2.15. You don't have to turn there. They put it up on the screen for us. Philippians 2.15 says that you may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Young's literal says, among whom you appear as luminaries Amen. in the world. Did you know you are a luminary? <laughs> Say it out loud. I'm luminous. I'm, luminous. I'm a luminary. I'm a luminary. Yes, say that three times real fast. I'm a luminary. <laughs> what does that mean? I shine. I shine. I shine. I, I enlighten where I go. When you walk in, the light comes in. If you don't cover it up. The Amplified says, among whom you are seen as bright lights... Stars are beacons shining out clearly in the dark world, holding out the word of life, offering it to men. Just like you look up in the night sky and this pitch black dark up there, except for, except for those lights, those points of light. Spiritually, that's exactly how the earth is. It's pitch black spiritually, except for all these lights. And some of them are brighter than others, right? Some of them not all that bright, but they're light. They're, they're light. I mean, some of them are real bright. Somebody they say, thank God for the light. Thank God for the light. Now, uh, another couple of places here. Ephesians 5, 8 says, Once you were darkness, this is the Amplified, once you were darkness, but now you are light in the world. There was a time before you got saved that you were just part of the darkness. But you're not part of that anymore. Amen. You're not part of that anymore. You are, the, you are light in the Lord. How many believe we've seen three witnesses already? Are you, the, are you light? Yes. Yes. We're light. In 1 Peter 2, turn to that one, please. 1 Peter 2. I'm going to continue reading in Ephesians right here. In Ephesians 5 9, listen to this. For the fruit, the effect, the product of the light or the spirit in every form of kindly goodness, uprightness of heart, and trueness of life. The light is. The truth of God, the light is the rightness and justness of God, which is light, and the light is the goodness of God. When you're giving your witness, what are you going to be talking about? You're going to be talking about how right and fair, how true and real, how good and kind He is. And that's light. That's light. That is the fruit, the scripture says, of the light. Involves the goodness of God. Now in 1 Peter 2 and 9. I know I'm giving you a lot, but if I, if I break it down too much, this series will take six months. <laughs> a lot of times things get in you, they're doing more in your heart than your head even knows. So just open yourself up and believe you receive it. And, and the bottom line on all this is you just keep saying, I'm light, I'm light, I'm light in the darkness. Remember Twinkle Twinkle, little star? Now I know who you are. Right? <laughs> You're the little star. <laughs> 
You are a chosen generation. You know who this is talking about? You are a royal priesthood. Somebody say, that's me, that's me, that's me. You are a royal nation. That's me. Now the word peculiar, that's a King James word. I think some people have used that verse as an excuse to be weird. No, 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 no. Another, another way of translating it is rare and precious. You are a, a chosen people, a rare and precious people. To do, what are we called to do? That you should what? That you should be witnesses unto me. That you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What should you tell people that are in pitch darkness about? Tell them they don't have to live in the dark. Tell them about the light. Tell them about how God brought you out of darkness into light. Listen to other translations of this. The New Century says, You were chosen to tell about the wonderful acts of God who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. You're chosen to tell it. Easy to read says, He chose you to tell about the wonderful things he has done. Amen. Isn't this what we've been talking about the whole time? Amen. Now, you may not be called to be a pastor or, or an evangelist or, or a missionary, but you are called to be a witness. Yes. And you are anointed. Yes. And God has chosen you. Yes. You're chosen yes. to be light and to tell the wonderful things he has done. The message says it like this, your God, he's chosen you to be a holy people, God instruments to do his work and to speak out for him, to tell others, somebody say tell others, tell others, tell others what, Testimony. what my church believes, no. huh, no. no, no, tell others what, Testimony. tell others of the night and day difference he made for you. From nothing to something. From rejected to accepted. Oh, that'll preach. I said that'll preach. To tell others what a night and day difference God has made in my life. How he brought me from nothing to something. How he took me from rejected to accepted. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now, you're not scared to tell somebody how God brought you from nothing to something. From rejected to accepted. No, you're not. God didn't give you the spirit of fear. But the spirit of power and of love and a sound mind so that you're bold. Hallelujah. To witness of what he has done for you. Say it out loud. I am a true witness of what the Lord has done for me. <laughs> Are you happy about it? Yes. <laughs> you know who's not happy about it? <laughs> the devil definitely does not want you to get stirred up about this. He wants you to shut up and keep it to yourself and completely separate church and state and church and school and church and work and you are a serious threat to that yeah you all you got to do is roll up and twinkle <laughs> and all the dark in the world can't stop light light is the most powerful thing we know of All the life that's on this planet is because of the light. You never walked into a pitch dark room, flipped the light switch, and watched the darkness roll about halfway back. <laughs> and then 
a following struggle between the light and the dark until one of them won. You never saw that and you never will. Why? Because darkness cannot contend with light. Darkness can only exist in the absence of light. We're all lit up in here today. If the railroad track came right by here, you could take 300 railroad cars full of darkness and you could pump every one of them into here. And you know what? You'd never know it. I said you'd never know it because the light is so much greater than the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it nor overtake it nor defeat it. The only way the devil can keep his grip of darkness on the earth is when the light is not there. Amen. That's when light begins to manifest. That's why he starts screaming and hollering and pulling his hair and tearing his clothes. Go, shut it off, shut it off, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> Which ought to make you ought to get a little louder. Go. Let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. <laughs> I'm a living witness. He saved me. Yes, he did. I was there. You can't tell me he didn't. I was there. Yep, yep, come on. I was there. Oh, yeah. He healed me last week. Yeah. Last week. Yeah. He healed me. Right. No, nah, no. Nah. Yes, he did. You can't tell me he didn't heal me. I said he healed me. Right. You understand? Right. I was there. Right. He did it for me. Come right. <laughs> well, on. That's, that's not true. That's not real. That's passed away. You can't tell me he's passed away. I said it happened to me. That's like coming and saying, there's no more water in pools. No, no water in pools. And you're in there doing the backstroke. You say, hey, I'm wet. Don't tell me there's no water in the pool. I'm wet. Splash, splash. And this, my friend, is so powerful. The devil hates it. It vexes him. And anybody that will yield to his influences, it vexes them. And that's why there is this continuous onslaught to shut us up and shut us down. Oh, yeah, people like to act like they're tolerant. Yeah, yeah, you believe what you want to, but you can't bring that in here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God has chosen us. Uh, we're a chosen people, royal priest, a holy nation. We were chosen to tell. Somebody say, I was chosen to tell. Was chosen to tell. The wonderful acts of God. The wonderful things he has done. He brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. You know, I think y'all are getting this. I think we're getting this. Go with me to uh, put up on the screen for us Acts 26, 16. And I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians 4. They're putting up on the screen for us Acts 26, 16. We studied last time about how that... Uh, Paul, that was, that was a big part of his call. He was also a preacher and a teacher. But he was first and foremost a witness. And there were times that he just gave his testimony. He didn't preach a message. He just told about when he met God on the road to Damascus. you remember that? And he'd go into detail and we got reason to believe he told that over and over again. And the Lord used it to shake kings. Remember yeah. Felix, Festus, Agrippa? There were times when one of them said, he started shaking and said, you need to go. And when I have a convenient time, I'll call you back. He's under conviction. Yeah. Yeah. What's happening? That's not just because Paul, you know, some people try to say Paul was such a great orator. Well, he was a learned man and could speak, but some people said his bodily presence was weak and contemptible. They didn't think much of him. No, what's going on here is beyond Paul, is beyond a man. He shared his testimony, and the Holy Spirit got up there in the throne with that guy. Amen. Right? Yeah. Got up in the chair with him. Yes. Yes. 
Agrippa, while he was giving the same testimony about how he saw that light and heard that voice and saw Jesus and got saved and quit persecuting the church and started preaching and building the church, Agrippa said, almost, you persuade me to be a Christian. <laughs> Remember that? What's going on? Power. Power. That's why the devil is so vexed by it. Does he want the king to get saved? No. Does he want people to come out of his grip, out of darkness into light? No, and the, and the only way he can stop it is to shut us up, to either shame us into silence or confuse us or shut us up any way that he can. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. He said in Acts 6, 26, 16, he told Paul, he said, rise, stand up on your feet. I've appeared to you for this purpose to make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and those things in which I will appear to you. That's what you can testify about is what you've seen. Keep reading. Delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles to whom now I send you. You know, sometimes the Lord has to deliver you from the people he sent you to. <laughs> Keep going. That's another message. <laughs> to open their eyes now, now what's, what's this witnessing and ministry going to do? To open their eyes. Somebody say open their eyes. Open their eyes. open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that's in me. So what will have happened to them? The same thing that happened to us. They will have been delivered out of darkness into light, and now we got another witness. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Second Corinthians 4, are you there? Yeah. Second Corinthians 4 and verse 2. He said, we've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Did you know you can quote good scriptures trying to support a wrong thing? You can misuse scriptures, try to make them say something they don't say, handling it deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Keep going, next couple of verses here. If our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, who's that talking about? Satan, Satan the devil, has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Why aren't they believing? What's going on with them? They're blinded. They're in the dark. You, you mean you don't have to look too far to see that now, do you? People will look at you with a blank look and they, got, they don't have a clue because they, they don't see it. It's just like having something over your eyes and, and, and a blindfold and people say, do you see this? And you go, no. Well, there it is right there. Do you see it? No. Well, they got a blindfold on. Why can't you see that? It's just plain as day. Well, not if you got a blindfold on. <laughs> He's blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest what should happen. What is the devil trying to prevent from happening? The light of the glorious good news about the anointed Messiah who is the image of God should shine unto them. Why? Because when the light shines and they see it, that's it. All the devils in hell can't keep them from getting saved or keep them from getting free. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure. What treasure? This light, this glory the truth of the gospel. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. You might not be that impressed by this clay pot you see on the outside, but there is something inside this pot. Come on, there's something inside this earth vessel that is glorious. 
us. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. Now Romans 2.4 touches on this. When we share the light of what God has done for us and how good he has been to us. The spirit of God gets involved with power in our witness. And the goodness of God leads to repentance. The Lord will prompt you to tell how good God's been to you and what he's done for you. And that's light. Now one of the things that you want to make sure that you never do, don't exaggerate. You want to mess up your witness now. You say one wrong thing, one lie, one false thing, and it'll cast a shadow over everything else that you said. So don't make up stories. And don't stretch it. And don't exaggerate it. You're a what kind of witness? I'm a true. I'm a true witness. I'm a faithful witness of what God has done for me. Because when you're telling something, people are going to be looking at you. They're going to be looking at your eyes and looking at your face and listening to the tone of your voice. What are they endeavoring to decide? Huh? Are they telling the truth? Or are they just full of confusion? Are they full of junk? Right? Hmm? Just a bunch of religious junk and nothing. Are they telling the truth or not? That's why you got to tell the truth Amen. and nothing but the truth. The truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Amen. Are we talking about being testifying? Yeah. We're talking about testifying. Yeah. Say it out loud. I'm going to tell the truth. Tell the, the, truth. Whole truth. the whole truth. And nothing but the truth. But the truth. So, help me God. so help me God. I'm a true witness. A true witness. <laughs> so the goodness of God when people hear it it will lead them to repentance and they will know the truth and the truth will what? It will make them free. Now go to John the third chapter. I'm, uh, I had not always seen what I'm about to share with you. I did not always know it was this way. I had different ideas than what I'm sharing with you now that, I'm, that I've come to see. And, to, and it, it, it's helped me tremendously to understand this life, this world, the way things are. What do we know about the whole world? It's lying in darkness. Minds are blinded. People are not seeing. And uh, it is a lot of people not seeing because of ignorance, but there's also a lot of people they're not seeing because they have closed their eyes. They don't want to see it. It's there to see. They actually caught a glimpse of it one time, but they don't want to see it. And that's the part I didn't always see. I thought, well, the biggest problem is ignorance. People just don't know. And there is a lot of that. But there's a whole lot of folks that have heard something and have seen something. But they closed their eyes to it. And they chose to stay in the dark. Would anybody do that? Millions are doing that. They don't want to see the light. Now, you know, physically, the way it happened how the enemy was able to move the people to kill Jesus, to crucify him. He accomplished it through false witnesses. Didn't he? Just like witnesses are powerful for good, they can be an evil force. And the Bible said their witnesses didn't even agree. (laughs) They couldn't get their story straight. (laughs) Trying to testify against Jesus telling lies and, and, and false things about him, then why was the Sanhedrin and the people, why were they able to, to come to a final judgment and go, yeah, that's good. We got testimony. We got proof. Why? 
They didn't care about the truth. They didn't care about the truth. They just wanted to shut him up, which is what the enemy wanted. And we got to understand that we're supposed to be a witness of the truth, but we don't be shocked if somebody don't want to hear it. If an, when an honest person hears the truth, you know what they'll do? When an honest man or an honest woman is presented with clear, obvious evidence, multiple eyewitnesses, evidence in the natural, what will they do? They will admit it, won't they? If they're honest, they'll admit it and go, well, that's true. Look at that. There it is. Has to be. They'll admit it. They'll believe it. They'll receive it. They'll repent. The goodness of God will have affected them and influenced them and changed them. And many people will do that. You did it. Indicates you got goodness in you. Indicates you got some honesty in you. Hmm? You ought to feel good about that. But if you're not an honest heart, you don't care if it's true or not. Hmm? No amount of evidence can persuade you. You don't care. Maybe it is true. That's not what you want to believe. That's not what you want to do. That's not how you want to live. You don't want to change. You don't want to repent. You don't care what's true. If that's the case, no amount of witnesses no amount of evidence will convince you you are unpersuadable by choice. And what's happening through the whole earth is the Word of God, the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart and mind, is showing which are good hearts and which are not. This is happening throughout, through each successive generation. And people are proving by their response to truth and light what's really in them, good or bad. I know it's sobering thinking, but it's the truth. John 3, are you there? John 3, 11, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say to you, we speak that we know and testify what we've seen, and you receive not our witness. Can you imagine the truth himself, the word made flesh, looking at these people and telling them the truth, and they just flat rejected it. They said, we don't care. Did they, they didn't want to know the truth. They didn't want to see it. And if they didn't receive him, then there'll be folks that don't receive us. Amen. Don't fall off your chair over it. <laughs> right? Don't be shocked when it happens. Hmm? Right. I found out a long time ago, not everybody would, would be ready to receive me when I preached and taught. You want everybody to like you. You want to get along. I, I've had people follow me uh, down the hall after I preached going, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't like you. Uh, I've had people wait on me out in the parking lot. I thought they were going to take a swing at me. They were so mad they could hardly talk. <laughs> that one guy, I think I made him madder. I said, he said, I don't like you. I said, you just don't know me. <laughs> I said, if you knew me, you'd like me. I think that made him madder. But did everybody receive Jesus? No. Did everybody receive Paul no. and Peter? No. Well, who are we? Right? There's going to be, there's some going to receive us and believe it and rejoice, and there's some that's not. That's right. Hmm? That's right. That's just how it is. But this is what's happening, happening in John 3 19. Jesus said, This is the condemnation that light is come into the world. And what happened? What? Men loved darkness instead, rather than, instead of, more than light. People are seeing truth and lies, and millions are going, I'll take the lies. Light and darkness, and millions are going, I'm going to stay in the dark. 
Aren't you thankful for the grace and mercy of God <laughs> that he helped you to say, no, <laughs> I want out. <laughs> I want the light. Show me the truth. I don't care how it shows me up and makes me look and what I got to change. Give me the truth. Give me the truth. Because the truth lies blind and lies bind. But the truth lets you see and the truth makes you free. This is the condemnation. Lights come into the world. Now let's back up. Right now, who is the light of the world? You are. Hmm? You're the light. I'm the light. We're the light. And light is manifested through our lives, through our witness, through our testimony. And some will see it and go, that is true. I'm going with you next Sunday. Right? That is true. Let's pray right now. Right? Some will. Some will be, some are honest. Some have good hearts and are honest when they see the truth. Others are not honest. They're dishonest. They'll act like they don't see it, and they do. And they'll choose darkness instead of light, and you can't change that. But I was saying, I've, I've learned, you know, some people are going to like what I preach, and some people are not. Some people are going to receive it, and some people are not. I've learned to, to just preach to everybody yeah. like they're going to love it. Yeah. I just preach to everybody like they're going to receive it. Right. And if they don't, I go, next? <laughs> next? Do you want this? <laughs> right? And I preach to them. I just preach to all of them like they go on. And if they don't, what do I do? Next. Next? Next? Do you want it? Right? That's not my job. <laughs> Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. They didn't want to change. They want to keep doing what they know is wrong. They don't want anybody talking to them about it. Jesus said, the world hates me because I testify <laughs> against it, that its deeds are evil. Keep reading. That's, that's verse 19. Everyone that does evil does what? Hates. Are there people in this world that hate the light? Oh, they do. They get venomous about it. Neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that does truth comes to the light. Come on, do you love the light? Love the light. Love the truth that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Oh, thank you, Lord. We are children of light. We have this light in these earthen vessels, this wonderful, amazing treasure. And when we act on what he tells us to do, I want you to notice in um, Proverbs, I believe it is, what happens. Man, this is one of the greatest verses about this. Proverbs 14 and 25. Don't take it personal if people don't accept your testimony. There are people that didn't accept Jesus himself. Right? You're not above him. Don't take it personal. But uh, just say next. <laughs> next. Do you want to hear this? <laughs> Because there are people who do want to hear it. Amen. There are people that, just like you, how many are thankful and would say, how beautiful the feet of them that brought the good oh, yeah. news to me? Huh? Yeah. You can be that to somebody else. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a pastor or an evangelist or missionary. You can be that. You can be that light, that spark, that twinkle in the pitch dark. Right? Yeah. That, that begins to enlighten their ears and heart. And, and they will be honest enough that when they hear it, they won't be able to get away from it. They'll think, you know, they really act like they believe that. <laughs> they really talk. I mean, you look them in the eye, it sounds like that really happened. And they won't be able to get away from it. And they'll want to talk to you again about it next yeah. week. Yeah. Right? right. Bring it up again. And they will come in. They will come all the way in. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> what happens with a true witness? A true witness does what? Can you see why you are such a threat to the devil? Why he works so hard to shut us up and shut us down? Because what souls are getting delivered? 
the ones under his blindness and darkness and control. Every time somebody gets saved and comes into the light, he suffers casualties. He lost somebody, right? Not only that, they themselves, the one he lost now, becomes a threat too. Is that right? This thing is just getting out of hand. He had one righteous man who was the light of the world, who had the Spirit of God on him, and he messed up his business all over the place. And then on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came and filled all of them and their witnesses, and now all of us, and this thing is just breaking across the earth like light. Come on, can you see it? That's right. That's right. You just, just about any continent, any town you want to go to, they might not be as obvious, but you keep nosing around, you're going to find one of us. Amen. Right? right? You'll find one of us. We may be a different color, a different uh, language or a different culture, but it's the same spirit. Same spirit, same spirit, and you stand still for two minutes, we will tell you yep. what God has done for us, and the Holy Spirit himself will come get involved and manifest and cause it to become effective and powerful. Oh, praise the Lord. Stand on your feet, everybody. Let's lift our hands and thank the Lord.